It's integration time. I'm going to demonstrate how to integrate against uh, the product that Mike just showed you, PX Checkout. And uh, I'm going to do that in a web shop I've created in Node.js with Express and Fetch. Uh, what we have uh, in our web shop is a we have a fluffy web shop. You'll understand why shortly. Uh, we have eight perchable, adorable, fluffy animals in the web shop, and currently the entire purchase flow within the web shop is mocked so it doesn't actually do anything and let's just show you how that looks like this is the web shop excuse me for the small font in the in the solution display there but i'll try to zoom on the code itself First, let's have a look at the server. This is just regular Node.js Express application. <coughs> the interesting bits uh, are down here. When we get the root, we do an application.show index. This is just a module I've created for the application logic. And as it says, this is this displays our purchasable fluffy animals. When the purchase through Pegs Checkout is complete, Pegs Checkout will submit the form, and this method will be invoked: submit order. And lastly, we will reach the receipt page which will so show the receipt of, of our purchase. Now if we look at the app module, <coughs> it has a start method, and whenever you re read access token, just think reference token, because that's what we're using. Uh, so here we just get the access token from an environment vari variable, and we start listening with our express server. Then the show index that is invoked on the front page or the root at the, the application does a bit of logic. It takes the page checkout object that was created during the start and it takes a payment session object and initializes that. That creates eight different requests, one for each fluffy animal. And then we execute all those promises simultaneously and return the URL of the created payment session for each animal up to the UI. And then when the form is submitted by checkout, we perform a capture. When the capture is complete, we redirect to the receipt. And the receipt doesn't do much more than request the query string parameters and display the receipt page. Then we have some er error handling down there. Now let's look at how the payment session object looks like. It's pretty simple. We just take an array, fill it with, with values, map each value with an integer plus one. So we get a value from one to eight. And then we call the initialize payment session method, which returns this JSON structure. And that's the JSON object that is going to be posted into the payment uh, session resource in PayX checkout to create a payment session. And lastly, let's have a look at PayX checkout. 
this is the module that is supposed to hold all the communication to PayX checkout, but currently it's rather empty. It just returns empty promises, pretty much. So what we need to do then? We need to retrieve the access token. Uh, that's partly implemented already. Uh, it looks something like that. We need to add some JavaScript. That looks like that. That's the JavaScript that will uh, initialize our payment button. And then we need to disable the purchase button. And then Pegs checkout will enable the button once it is initialized. And then we need to retrieve the post URL. That's the URL we're going to post the payment session to. We do that by performing a GET request on the checkout root resource. And we find the URL there. Next we need to perform the HTTP POST request of the payment session. That's how the request looks like. You can see we can add an invoice fee because sending dead trees is expensive. And then in the response we will get a 210 201 created uh, status code with an ID property set to the URL of the payment session just created. And that URL we're going to stuff into the purchase button. And we're going to then when we return from Pegs checkout we're going to retrieve the payment URL from the payment session. We just do a get on the payment session and then the payment property down there contains the URL to the, to the payment. And then the payment itself contains the operation we're going to perform to capture the payment. So there you see we have a create checkout capture uh, relation that corresponds to a URI and that URI we're going to post to, to capture the payment. And lastly, the capture request itself looks like this. So regardless of the payment method, if you want to capture the entire payment, the entire amount, you just submit this and nothing more. And now it's demo time. Now we have the same problem as earlier. I think it's actually PowerPoint's fault. I like blaming Microsoft, so let's just quit this, see if that helps. Nothing? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> Let's not full screen this now. So now we're going to expand our application. Let's first just have a look at how it looks like. So here it is. And here you can see the server running in the background which, uh, and what it does. So for the oops, for the front, front page, it's, it crea creates these eight different payment sessions you can see. But it only sets them up. It doesn't perform an HTTP request because our Pegs checkout module only returns empty promises as you saw earlier. So now let's start implementing. What we need to do is first add 
some JavaScript to lay out. And that's the view we have here. And here you can see the JavaScript is added to the document header. And what's that going to do is when we next disable the payment button, that's in the index, you can see now that the button is disabled. It's going to now read the value of this attribute. And when Pegs Checkout does that, it's going to initialize and in enable that button so it can be clicked. But we're still not doing any HTTP requests to Pegs Checkout, so let's advance a bit more. <coughs> now we have implemented the fetching of the URL. So we can see now that we have not the the empty uh, promise anymore. We have a fetch method returning the JSON of the root checkout resource. And here you can see we pass in the access token in an authorization header with the bearer authentication scheme. The JSON is just dumped to the console with the JSON module, and then we just return these two, uh, this object containing these two functions. And these are the functions you see that we looked at earlier down here. It's a create payment session function and the capture function. Uh, it comes from an environment vari variable. So I've encoded it into a file called .env with the .env module, but you can pass it in uh, by just creating uh, an environment variable uh, called access underscore token. But uh, for integrators, you log into the PayX admin interface and then you create access tokens and then you use them in your integration. So that's how the, the access tokens are created in the first place. And now let's go on to step four and let's try to focus here so we can see what's, what happens. Now <coughs> we're doing the creation of the payment session. You can see we're doing a post method and we're passing in the authorization as before. And we are returning the JSON just as is. No need to create view models or anything in JavaScript because it's all loosely typed anyway. And now we can refresh here and hopefully we can see in our server that we have performed a set of HTTP requests. If we scroll up, we can see that these are even perf these are performed in parallel, so we can see that uh, there's kind of race conditions on when they are printed to the console. But that's a nice feature, I think, that you can do that so easily in Node.js. So now each of these elements are going to have the data payx checkout attribute set to a URL. And that's the URL that the JavaScript uses to initialize payx checkout. So hopefully now if we click this button, something is going to happen. And yes, it does. Page checkout is initialized and it has uh, identified the payment session as valid and has now opened the page checkout window. Uh, but we're not done yet because uh, when we when page checkout submits the form that contains the button we pressed, 
we need to perform some logic. So let's go on and do that. And let's look at the capture function then. <clears throat> Here you can see what happens then. This is a bit long chain of promises because there's quite a few things that happen. First, we perform a get on the payment session, the URL of the payment session, so we get its current state. Within that state, there's a payment property. That's also a URL. So we perform a new fetch on that payment URL to get its current state. And we convert that to JSON. And within the payment, we look for this operation. And that operation has an href attribute or a property pointing to a new URL. So we perform an operation on that, a fetch operation. And that's the post, the final post, that actually does the capture. And while this might seem tedious, it's actually pretty simple. It's just a chain of promises uh, that you will um, become very familiar with when you start doing uh, hypermedia and that you will be uh, used to if you've done promises in Node uh, already or if you're just using functional programming because that's how most functional programming works. You pipe something into a, to a function and then you get a result back and then you do something with that and pipe it to a new, fun new function. That's functional programming. <coughs> so, lastly, we return the JSON from the capture and we here can see the amount and the state of the transaction that was captured. So, if we now refresh our web shop, we have created a set of new payment sessions. Let's buy this owl. I'll just use my registered account. I should get an SMS. I'll pay with invoice, and here you can see that the invoice fee is being added. There's a warning here, letting us know. <coughs> and that is something checkout does automatically. You just need to say in the post of the payment session if you whether you want an invoice fee when invoice is uh, chosen by the user or not, and then checkout handles the rest. And then the payment is done. And we can see here that the capture request has been sent. Let's look a bit more in detail on this. You can see here the payment session. It is pointing to the payment URL. This is the payment itself. It contains the create checkout capture operation. And this is the request for the capture operation. And lastly, the webshop redirects to the receipt page. <coughs>